In this video we'll learn how to make a miniature Lego sized TV for the friends apartments. This set is especially good for this project, although if you don't have room for such a large set then another set you can make a mini TV for is Bro Thor's apartment. To make this TV we will use a 0.96 inch OLED display. These are widely available on eBay, Amazon or AliExpress and cost around $5. The screen offers a 128x64 pixel display. They're intended for use as instrument control panels, but they also make convenient Lego sized TVs. <gasps> oh my god! The downside is that the screen is only a monochrome display. I hesitate to call it black and white because displays are available in a range of tinted colours. I think it's kind of cool though, because when I first started watching Friends in the mid 1990s, I had to watch them on a tiny black and white TV too. The other advantage of this particular display is that it only requires four wires to connect it up. Monochrome images also take up less memory. Finally, this particular display fits well with Lego bricks. I found it fits really well inside a standard 4x3 window. Putting the TV in Monica's apartment was especially easy because I just swapped out the 4x3 wall panel and put a flat 4x3 window in its place. This gives the impression of a wall mounted flat screen TV. The boys apartment was a little more complex. I found I could fit the display into their existing TV display stand, but I had to move it one stud forward from the wall. If you want to hide the wires then you can easily feed them through Technic bricks. I should point out in this tutorial the TV only displays a number of static images. It can potentially play video clips but to do that you will need to add in an SD card and do a bit more programming. Check my playlist for other videos on how to create full colour Lego sized TV displays. If you want to build your own Lego sized TV then you will need the following. Some kind of computer so you can download code onto the Arduino. I use a Windows PC but you can also use a Mac. An Arduino Uno, a USB cable. Arduinos generally come with one, but if you want a longer one, they tend to use the old school style USB printer cables. Arduinos will run on a 9 volt PP3 battery or an external USB power bank. You'll also need some jumper cables. If you buy an Arduino starter kit, then you'll probably have plenty of these. I bought 1 meter long ones on eBay, and they're great for wiring up larger sets. Finally, you will need an I2C 1306 OLED display. All of these electronic components are widely available on eBay, Amazon and AliExpress. AliExpress are generally cheaper but can take longer to arrive. So there are two parts to getting the miniature Lego sized TV working. We need to wire up the little display to the Arduino Uno and then we need to write some code to run on it. If you want to play around with electronics without actually having the hardware itself then you can go to Wokwe, this website here. So I'll run through the circuit diagram of what we actually need to build with the hardware. So we click here for new Arduino Uno project. Here's our Arduino Uno here, so we can make this code window smaller. This is the code here which we will write later. So we need to click on here to add something and we need a SSD 1306 OLED display, which is actually this one here. So here this gives a simulation of one of these. So we need to wire up the Arduino to the little screen here. What we do here is, let's see, right, so the 5 volts go to VCC. That should always be called VCC on your display. Some of the pins do have different names occasionally, but that should always be the same. So VCC is voltage inwards. And we connect that to the 5 volts pin here on the Arduino. The Arduino has a couple of 5 volt pins. Well, it doesn't on this mock up, but on the real one, I think there was three of them. The other one we need to do is to connect the GND. This is the ground, and this one goes here to one of the grounds. And again, the Arduino has several grounds. I think there's three of them. They're marked as GND. So this is the basic electrical circuit. Electrical circuit goes out of the 5 volts into the little screen and then out in the ground again. So there are two data lines that we need to connect here. SDA goes to A4 here and SCL goes to A5. Is that connected? I think I've made a mess of that. Ah. Uh, I'll have to delete that one. Right, try again. 
Okay, A4 is to SDA, and SCL goes to A5. Right, that's pretty standard. So if you find some code on the internet that uses this little 1306 display with the Arduino Uno, then it normally uses A4 and A5. So that is our hardware. Now we have to write some software. And I'll put a link to the description below of the code I used to show the friends images on the screen. I'll just paste in my code. So I'll copy this code and then paste it into what we. Let's see. So let's see if we can run the code. Nope. So the code won't run because we are missing the SSD 1306 software library. So this one here. So we go to library manager and then click on add and then look for SSD 1306. Yep. So it's the Adafruit SSD 1306 library. And that's added. So we can go back to our sketch and hopefully it will now run. So it's thinking about it. Okay, yep, so our code is working and on the virtual display, our images are being displayed here. So if you want to make a miniature TV, you need to do this wiring exactly as it is in this diagram here. And I'll connect up my Arduino just to show that it works. An Arduino will run off a battery and it will also run off a USB device here. So as you can see, mine is doing pretty much the same thing. Now I'll go over to the Arduino RDE and show you a bit more about how I actually made the images and also how to upload this code onto the Arduino. I should just mention that at this stage, if you unplug the Arduino and plug it back in again, the code stays on there. So even if you remove the power and it will just run the code that was already on the device. So if you want to actually put the code onto the Arduino itself, then you have to install the Arduino IDE. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. To put the code on the Arduino itself, you need to connect the USB cable up to the computer. Normally, if you plug in the Arduino, then a different COM port will appear. We'll just try that. Okay, so mine is on COM12. You should also check that the Arduino Uno is the board that's selected here. Sometimes I do development for the ESP32 as well. So the code I'm using is using the Adafruit GFX library and also the Adafruit SSD1306 library. So you need to go to Sketch, Include Library and Manage Libraries. So when the library manager appears, search for GFX and you should see the Adafruit GFX library. If it's not installed, then click on the install button here. Then you'll need to search for SSD 1306. Not that one. It's the Adafruit one. There it is. So you need to click on the Adafruit SSD 1306 library and make sure that one is also installed. It will have a installed label here if it is installed. So my code is based on the examples. If you go to examples, when the libraries are installed, then it will put some examples here. SSD 1306 and I think it's the I2C one. Our display is the 128 by 64 pixels one here and I think it's the I2C example. So. You can try running this one once you've wired up your thing and then uploading it to the sketch. It will step through a few demonstrations. So I modified this demonstration one to just show bitmaps. I cut out the other parts of the demo. So I'll quickly run through the code. It's not terribly difficult to get this screen up and running because it only has four wires. So make sure that the screen width is 128 and the height is 64. You'll also need to check the pins, so A4 to SDA and A5 to SCL. Normally these screens have them labelled, although you may need to use a magnifying glass to actually see them. And anything else you shouldn't need to change. I'll skip through the code here. So this is the graphics which are converted to a chart which is stored in ProgMem. This is quite an advanced topic, but it allows you to put the images onto the device. 
The Arduino doesn't have a great deal of memory, but for these small black and white images, I think I've got half a dozen. In a minute, I'll show you how to actually make the images. Yeah, so I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got seven images. There's the Baywatch logo, Drake Ramore, Pamela from Baywatch, and three smelly cat ones. Also Yasmin from Baywatch. So the code is quite straightforward. The main loop, it just selects one of the random files from the array here and then renders it on the display using display.drawbitmap. So you can use the graphics library to display dot draw bitmap. This is a function that puts a bitmap on a screen. So the first two parameters are the X and the Y coordinates for this start. So we start this one at zero, zero. Next it is the bitmap data. And then it is the width of the image, the height of the image. And I can't remember what the one is for. So you have to call display dot display then to actually render it on the screen. There's a delay, three second delay between the images being displayed. After that, it clears the display and goes back and chooses another image. So how to make the images? I basically searched Google for a few images. So then I proportionally resize them to 128 by 64 pixels. Then they will fit exactly on the screen. And there's a few other ones. This was the original smelly cat image, so I have resized it. Some images work better than others. Here's the Baywatch logo, which I resized, and this one I would say works about the best. So how do we get this image and convert it into the byte data? So to convert images, we use image to cpp a really useful website, and I've linked to it in the description below. So we select our image. And once the image is selected, you can preview it here. You can invert the colors. I think I did this. It kind of looks better. You can also change the threshold. If you adjust this, some images look better than others. Let's see if it's 40. No, that's worse. That's kind of overexposed. So I think that's okay for this one. For some devices work the other way round, so you might want to flip it, although it's pretty much better to use an image processing package to actually do the adjustments rather than use this. So once we're happy with the preview of the image, we click on generate code here. I know this is quite technical, but basically all we have to do is to copy the comma separated line of numbers here and paste them into here. So if you wanted to take my code but use different images, then you just copy the image data shown previously and paste it into one of these variables. So you can delete this and then put this data back in. So as I said before, I managed to cram seven different images onto here. You can change the display if you want them to cycle more quickly. I should also mention that in real life, the image display is very solid and it doesn't flicker like it does in the video. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. Check out my channel because I have a few other tutorials about making little tiny Lego sized TV screens. Let me know if you have any success with this and what Lego set you're going to put your miniature sized Lego TV in. Thanks for watching.